G'day folks, it's Anthony here from Supernal Magazine Australia and we've got another in our interview series um, with Steve Noble coming up and uh, we know that we're going to enjoy this interview. Uh, you can go and see all our interviews at www.supernalmagazineaustralia.com.au and you join our YouTube channel, subscribe to that. That's free, like the magazine. It's all free online. So just subscribe away and lands in your door every two months. Uh, my guest host today is Shirley Sienna. How are you, Shirley? I'm very well, thank you. You made it sound like we throw it in like a newspaper. Well, it's a bit like that in the <laughs> inbox, just like that. It just happens. Uh, I'm on the bike doing deliveries, no doubt. <laughs> well, that's it. And uh, And I know you're excited to be involved in this interview today because when I said to you that I'd finally got on to our guest, uh, Steve Noble, who's just sitting quietly in the background on the left there, uh, we, we you just said, I've got to be on, I've got to be on, I've got to be on, let's just Literally, make it happen. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, being, I'm very fussy. I only listen to my own meditations. <laughs> and when uh, Spirit just brought you onto mine, I was in a pretty bad way. I wasn't well and there was a whole lot of stuff going on about a year or so ago. And I found you on uh, YouTube and I went, I'm going to listen to this. And immediately things started to lift. I think you've, your meditations link in. They are streaming. They are connected. They are real. And I feel it's healing for body, mind and spirit. So thank you very much. And thank you for my many friends who are also now addicted to Steve. Oh, yeah, pleasure. well, that's good. Pleasure. So we, we better bring you in, Steve, because I know you're sitting yeah. there. And, um, <laughs> thank you so much for agreeing to have a chat with us. Um, pleasure. You're doing some amazing work, and and I I can't even put it in any other way than that. Uh, the the meditations and how you bring them about, and we're going to sort of talk about that as we go through. But um, it just really is lovely to to sort of see the the face behind the voice and hear the voice on you know live. But um, so, how are you doing? Uh, I'm good, uh, actually. Uh, one thing, uh, I know we had a little chat before we came online, but one thing I didn't tell you was actually here in England, I got bitten by a spider about three or four weeks ago. And uh, I didn't realize it at the time. Uh, and basically, I had that kind of size went red purple on my lo left side of my uh, lower abdomen. Uh, you could see the puncture in the middle, you know, and uh, everything. And um, I meditated on it for a number of weeks and it eventually came to me that it's something to do with the mother wound, you know, spiders, <clears throat> feminine. Spider. And so I've been putting out a lot of tracks recently about healing the mother wound and going through that myself. I to listen to them. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of people probably also resonate with healing the mother wound, you know, it's always yeah. always down to mother, isn't it? <clears throat> well, that's it. <laughs> Therapy. Get the blind she comes it. in somewhere. <laughs> then father will come in somewhere. Yeah. Well, you know, we, 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 a lot of people talk about the, the mother wound and, and not everyone talks about the, the, the masculine or the father aspect in all of that. And, you know, um, how you can grow up in a family with a, with a male that is your father, that is not necessarily the nicest person in the world. And you've still got to deal with that struggle as well. So even though mum's going through it, then the children will go through that at that space. Yeah. Well, I kind of address the mother wound first because we all pop out of the womb and we all kind of have that intimate connection. <laughs> yeah. and One way or another, we all get out. Get we all out. come out. And then we're not only getting downloads from our mother. What I realize is we're getting downloads from her mother and her mother's mother and so on. And so there's a whole download through the womb. So that one had to be addressed first. Um, but healing the father wound, of course, is coming because um, we've lived for a, quite a long time in this patriarchal masculine system, overly masculine system. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the, the wild masculine, the divine feminine, these core energies, but the system we're living in is a distorted system where, you know, you have popes and generals and prime ministers <clears> and, you know, well, you've got prime minister, like we've got one over, not, he'll oh. be gone soon anyway, this one. Oh, anyway. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I don't even know who he is. <laughs> so these systems are very kind of distorted. They're not balanced at all. And I think what's happening is, is emerging new age of light. Um, maybe you can say, call it that. This new age, this new energy coming on the planet is there's a rebalancing, a rejiggling of these energies. And old fuddy-duddy, in England we'd call it fuddy-duddy, I suppose. Old yeah. structures like that are 
wobbling, shaking, collapsing. And re really, it's not about replacing them with matriarchal systems. It's about creating, probably for the first time in living history, systems where the masculine and feminine are in partnership and in our own being as well. Yep. So systems and in our own being, where in ourselves, we're, you know, people talk about the other half, my other half, but actually we want to be whole beings in a relationship with another whole being. That's the idea, really. Mm. And so, like butterfly, two wings with the body in the middle, you know, yeah. I, like a bit like, or like the Vesica Piscus coming together. Yeah. And the center is yes. where we come together, two whole beings joining, supporting mm. each and yeah. those energies. And we're not used to these energies supporting one another. An example would be, which I was trained, you, you must have been also, I think, in systems where logic is, you know, is the emperor, logic yeah. and reason oh, and analysis. <laughs> <laughs> well, school will teach you that, you know, whether you yeah. not like it or not, they'll teach you that. Okay. And, um, you know, intuition, imagination and all of that elbowed out the way, you know, well, what's the value? Certainly when I grew up, I agree. My father gave, yeah, yeah. yeah. My father gave me the message, um, get a proper job. And that proper job did not include what I'm doing now. So uh, <laughs> I bet. <yeah. laughs> so, I now he's said that to me occasionally. Get a proper job. <laughs> yeah, get a proper job. He told me that, and my grandmother, who I love dearly, his mother, <laughs> said, "Get a secure job." So I had this: get a secure job, get a proper job. So <laughs> I went into banking. You know, that was I thought well, that's secure and that's proper. I think yeah. uh, when I went in there, I was really. Um, it gave me an insight into the workings of the city, which was not very nice, really. I didn't really like the ethics of it one bit. I left after 10 years and went into something else. But now I think he's on the other side, my father and my mother. But my father apparently has had a, a, a shift, according to mediums who channel him. He's had a shift. He's now realizes, as a lot of beings do, I suppose, when they go to the other side, that um, he perhaps behaved in a way that maybe he could have been a bit different and encouraged me perhaps a bit differently. But, um, I think the, yeah. the, the interesting part about that, because I... I, I grew up in a very similar sort of space uh, I mean you know got to get a job got to be secure it's got to be a practical job you can't do anything else uh, and you know god bless my mum who's still here that she you know she calls supernal magazine a newsletter because she can't huh? get around it being an, an oh, old magazine and it's taken until you know she's 81 now and she actually started the, the reading the magazine properly only a year ago and right. now she's sort of changed her whole attitude and she's coming up and she'll, she'll ring me and say, I've just read that story you wrote and I really think every man on the planet should be reading it and things like that. Oh. So it's that time, you know, growing up because our parents were controlled by their parents, controlled by their parents, which is what you were yeah. just talking about. And yeah. it's only these days I think that, we're starting to see the emergence of the partnership because I, I believe you're right. We don't want a matriarchal society. We've got to be a partnership to get the balance right. So, yeah. you know, and it means doing away with the old way of thinking and looking at new thinking. And just to give you an idea, I'm an ex-mechanic. I've run workshops and, uh, you know, spent most of my time working on tools. And here I am now the editor of Supernal Writing. Of workshops spiritual ones <laughs> and now i do spiritual workshops exactly yeah different tools different tools <laughs> and it is funny i have clients come up here and they have car problems so i tell them how to fix their car problems or i fix flat tires for them i've done all these other things all right yeah so there's a practical component still there uh and yet it still relates spiritually to how the person's living and what they're doing and all the rest of it so yeah yeah I think all of our journey, the tools and experience we gain, is all useful, even if it feels like it's completely different. I had 10 years in the city of London learning about finance. I had 10 years in local government learning about taking care of people, I suppose. Um, it was kind of a social services type of thing, elderly and learning difficulties. And um, and then I, I kind of stepped into a slightly leadership role there. And then I became a director of a spiritual organization for 13 years. And that was amazing. You know, so each step seemed completely different to the previous one. But when I look back, I can connect the dots and go, well, all of them have given me experience and tools and gifts or activated gifts that I didn't quite know about. So, you know, um, and now I talk a lot about abundance, for example, and my time in the city taught me about energy at the time i didn't realize it but it's about energy flow because i worked in a place where money it wasn't like 10 quid going through an account it was like a million you know there was a million there a million there, and it was like supersonic you know there 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 and um and they talked about 
millions and billions. It was that kind of thing. But to me, it was energy flows, so like currents of river, you know, river currents flowing along. Current, uh, and I could feel it. Hmm? A current and the currency. Yeah, currents and the currency, yeah. <laughs> and I could feel um, th that level of wealth and also <clears throat> the kind of well, the le levels of wealth in the regular society was so vastly different. You know, I could feel this big gap between the two. Then I worked in local government, which is working with, again, people, I suppose, at the, at the lower levels, you know, people who are struggling a bit. Um, I, so I went from a very right wing conservative or con conservative environment to a more a socialist environment. And then I worked in the middle. So it was really good. I'm a Libran, so I like balance. You know, I came back to the middle in a spiritual organization. And that was an amazing training ground for all kinds of things, seeing all kinds of people, you know, like um, Neil Donald Walsh, uh, Julia Cameron, uh, Deepak Chopra, you know, Edgar uh, um, Eckhart Tolle, all of those characters, yeah. and I'd have tea with them, yeah, which is the yeah. nice bit. I'd listen to them, but I can have tea with them beforehand yeah. and see yeah. how are they behind the camera, you know, that yeah. of in, yeah. not, not in front of the camera, I should say. Oh. So that was really, you know, Marion Williamson. I met all of the... I think all the people I wanted to meet, except I'd never met um, Joseph Campbell. He died before I kind of woke up. I would have loved to have met him, actually. Uh, the Hero's I, Journey. I something I was listening to today, they mentioned him. We are in sync. <laughs> yeah. He, I loved his work. I, oh, I love his work. He's great. So the whole journey is now I'm in a, in a work that I still think my father, I wonder if he would understand now, even on, if he's on the other side. Maybe he would. I hope he would. That I'm in a kind of zone where now my my ex-wife used to say to me, "What cult are you into now?" She was she was very she's Catholic, and when I came into this work in the early '90s, she was like very upset about it. Yeah. Now she's our best friend. She's like, "Buy me crystals in Glastonbury, you know, I'll get me a diffuser, get me some essential oils." So she's turned 180 degrees around, really. Yeah. So she's yeah. I, I haven't yeah. told her. Then you, you're in the cult now, Anna, but I haven't told her that. I yeah. probably wouldn't find it funny. Yeah. I love it. So what ignited your, look, all the things you just said are right here in your, your chart, your numerology chart. I'm like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Good, so good. yeah everything's correct. What, what ignited you literally to realising there was a spiritual realm and there's more going on or what was your, you know? Um, as a kid, I was interested in everything alternative, sci-fi, you know, mag comics, magazines, superheroes, I was into, I never had a word spiritual, of course. As a teenager, I got into Star Trek, love Star Trek, Bewitched. Now, when I first saw Bewitched, this was the first kind of magical program. My father turned it off. He said, no, not suitable viewing for you. He was very kind of, you know, like it Bewitched, it's just such a sweet program. I mean, eventually he did relent and I got to see it. And Bewitched was very magical. Like there are, you know, the whole, uh, archetype of the witch, this kind of magical being as evil. Now was suddenly this beautiful uh, Elizabeth Montgomery. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I love that kind of thing. So I was really drawn to all of this. I think my parents were getting increasingly worried the, the older I got, you know, and they, they they wanted me to stop daydreaming and well, get real, I think. That's <laughs> often because secretly your dad perhaps had a bit of that going on himself and had to be in denial or it wasn't allowed. A yeah, it wouldn't have been brought allowed. Up a little thing that reminded him of something. Yeah, he, I think he was, a, I think he was a very gifted person, but somehow he was a product of the time, you know, he was uh, evacuated in the war from London and uh, followed a very traditional path and he wanted me to do the same. I didn't really want to do that. I woke up in 1991 after his death. His death was actually the wake up call. I had several months of synchronicity. I never knew what synchronicity was, one after the other, pointing the way to a teacher, a healer. And I found a spiritual teacher. She pointed the way to all kinds of things. So within about seven months, the whole new world opened up. All these doorways I never knew were there. All these connections, channels. I heard first time about all these channels. I dived into <coughs> various channels. Lazaris, um, you made his American channel. Orin, Darben. Oh, um, yeah. Various yeah, I, I trained with them yeah. for two years. Oh. I went to America, trained with them. Oh, my God. They both passed now. Over, <laughs> they, they were incredible, actually, those two. Um, I did Awakening the Light Body with them. Um, so that that kick-started my journey off. Um, I explored shamanism, Wicca, metaphysics. I, if, if, it was, if there was something there that I thought was valid, I dived into it and I wanted to explore it. And I am highly pragmatic. Pra I'm very practical. I want to know, does it work? And I think, you know, is it useful? Does it work? 
if it doesn't i file it away if it does i go great you know so i i dived into manifestation you the idea the channel said you create your reality and i want i want to know if that's true and i want to try it out so i did try it out <clears throat> and i learned hey it works that you can create your reality and that was a massive revelation for me and then connecting to guides and higher self i just dived in and then things like psychic surgery and um i uh hit another point in my life in 2012 the dark night was calling me dark night of the soul you oh, know that uh, yep. and, and uh, i was feeling a shift happening this was not a light shift like the first one not, it wasn't magical this was heading into darkness and i'm like oh i don't really want to go there I'm, i want to stay out but i uh, it eventually i get pulled into this dark night i resigned from from alternatives the company i was uh, director of my then partner and i separated after 12 years and I went into six years of a dark night, which was very, um, very transformative in a bit like the caterpillar in the cocoon. You know, I didn't want to go in that place, but it made me look at things. One of the things it did open me up to was there are darker forces on the planet, which I hadn't really looked at before. Um, I knew you can get psychic interference and all of that. I'd experienced that before, but I'd never experienced um, darkness of that kind. And so I spent, it was a bit like um, Harry Potter meeting those, you know, what, what do you call those things? The, 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 not the devourers or the something or others. Or yeah, whatever. the oh, guardians the, of the prison, the, those kind of weird yeah, things. Yeah. So I was meeting lower astral beings for the first time, and I didn't really like them, obviously, but I didn't really feel I had much of a defense against them. Uh, so I had to learn um, how to navigate that world, how to come out of that world. Yeah. And uh, I met a couple of healers that helped me. I did um, a whole... Uh, a light body psychic surgery course afterwards and so that really helped me shape my understanding of light and dark on the planet because a lot of spiritual teachers talk about the light but i also talk about the dark the, the light and the dark are both there they're both you know there and they're kind of um there's a kind of wrestling going on perhaps you could call it of light and dark where oh, the dark forces are being banished really because the light is intensifying they don't like it and those dark forces are also pulling strings in governments and financial systems. And all of these systems have been intertwined with this kind of darker energy. And I don't want to dwell too much on the darker energy, but it is real. And of course, a lot of people are being woken up by the darker forces. They're being hit by them and then they're having a wake up. So the dark forces are also waking people up, which is great. Uh, I believe those forces were behind things like 9-11 and the recent lockdown. You know, these are all orchestrated events. Yeah. Yeah. and aim to keep the planet in a low frequency because if you can keep the planet in fear then you can control the planet and keep the light away exactly and i just want to jump in there it's really funny because i came out of living in the dark for many years <clears throat> excuse me i'm going to have to talk about it sometime um and it was it was interesting because i didn't know there was a light I was just in that space uh, for yeah. many years. And, you know, Shirley and I have known each other for a very long time now. And she's sort of seen that change where I've actually realized, hang on, there's good stuff here. There's light stuff here. Oh my gosh, there's more stuff up here. And, you know, Supernal has, you know, we only started that in 2019, but that mm. has even opened my eyes even further to what I came through as a child and up into being an adult and starting on this journey and you know when i was about 30 so it's it yeah. is very real and you know you can't just go through life going oh everything's so light and easy and breezy and stuff like that because we know it's not real yeah oh, it's yeah. not real <laughs> i wrote that in my you haven't read my article yet have you because i wrote no. it. it's we don't get a package of light and easy delivered <laughs> oh well there you go i hadn't read it yet i've been having email problems so uh, yeah. well you know there is a point to the dark forces they are here we gotta you, you know if you if you just look at yeah if you, we've got to be whole we can't be yeah, half. If, you, if you look at the planet you can see it's all not love and light you know we might live in a we might go to workshops where it's all love and light or, or retreats where yoga and cacao are served but actually the world itself is going through a major transformation major shift and i think people who are waking up now who i consider star seeds um the ones who are really leading the way yes. are um, 
are, are helping to give it to birth and anchor a new light onto the planet because light is coming into the planet but it, it needs beings to anchor it into the human collective light. you know people yeah. they avoid avoid and pretend and, and you know doesn't mean we have to be deep and gloomy all the time but there's avoidance and pretense and it's got to be a reality and the way that we get such amazing growth is through traversing our way through that dark we come out of the womb the womb is dark we come out of the yeah. womb into the light and go oh my God. and then we're yeah. encouraged to only have the light we can't have any dark but you know oh, yeah. beings of a whole energy so to acknowledge and work through and you know, and there's different levels of it, obviously, where we, you know, of, of who we are and how we are, but it doesn't mean that um, the pe the beings in the dark forces don't ascend, shall we say, any less. In fact, they probably do it faster than us because <laughs> mm. there's no conscience there as well and, and the universe is objective like that, except I believe when we get to this certain point, then it's like, oh, we're just all here. Let's just go mm. up. We can forget all this crazy stuff after several densities yeah i, I, I to totally <laughs> but i think there is a progression for people usually mm. I, I, I guess many people resonate with this that we, we kind of live in a, a negative critical cynical world you know mm. mostly in that 3d world it's kind of who's to blame who's it for you know who's climbing over who to get to the position i mean that's an exaggerated view perhaps but there is that oh. energy <laughs> then we find the spiritual world angels and spirit guides and higher self and crystals and all that and suddenly there's a world of positive energy and so people naturally go towards the positive and want to turn away from the other world which is natural so we go in the world we immerse ourselves in this beautiful world that there comes a point which i call spiritual maturity where we can actually face what's really going on without leave we don't become miserable or depressed you know i, I don't feel depressed any you know i know i can see what's going on in the world i see dark forces at play but I don't feel depressed. I feel quite happy. I love what I do. I, you know, the sun is shining. I'll go and walk along the sea. I, you know, it's like the Buddha would say, if you can really face suffering, you can really be happy. You can be, he didn't teach misery. You know, there's lots of images of the Buddha laughing and all of this, but he said, look at suffering and transform it. And I think, look at the darkness and transform it in yourself. We need to transform it in ourselves, first of all, sure. before we can even attempt to go out in the world and do anything, you know. Otherwise, you know, you, you'll be one of those angry people on a peace march, which I've seen a few times, you know, <laughs> I'm angry. We want world peace. And it doesn't really work, does it? If you've got a load of angry people asking for world peace, it doesn't really work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was just going to yeah. say, we've had a lot of protesting and stuff going on here uh, in Melbourne uh, over the Palestine thing and all the rest of it. And, and the angriness is something that I'm noticing in people at the moment. They're just, whatever the phase that, we're going through um, people that are struggling to connect maybe into their light or their higher selves. Uh, they tend to towards anger very quickly. Or frustration, probably more frustration anger. driven. Anger, yeah. Anger is, anger is use, frustration is not as useful. Mm. Anger is, is a different energy. They're mostly frustrated, I think. P possibly. And it's coming out in that angry yes. way. And, That's and how it, it I think they're struggling with that concept of, of how, how can you stand up and do something and make a difference? And it's still got to start within yourself. Well, I protest it to yeah. your controllers. Yeah. I say demonstrate. Demonstrate what yeah. you want to do, what you do want, not protest to someone that's just like putting the whip out. There's no intention. You're wasting your yeah. time, breath, and energy. Mm. Yeah. I think a lot of people who are not drawn to spirituality, who probably never go there in this lifetime, are looking, are becoming more aware of the injustices of the world. You know, whistleblowers are coming out now since 2012. And so, you know, on some social media platforms, you can see what the news is not telling you. And so there's a rising, you're right, there's a rising anger amongst a lot of people, young people, about what governments are doing. And, you know, they're, they're showing it. And uh, oh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yes, with, that we'll um, find the spirituality. That's what's yeah. crying out and yearning out for them to go and discover that it's just waiting there. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, if this not this lifetime, maybe another. But you know, the world is changing. It's changing rapidly, and it's causing a lot of confusion, uncertainty in people. Because as the light comes in, the, all of the dark structures are shifting, and people are looking around. What's happening? You know, things are changing super fast. In my parents' day, nothing changed. 
everything was exactly how it should be you know the the man's role was this way the woman's role was that way this is the job you had for life my grandfather had a gold watch for 45 years service you don't get any of that now everything is so fluid now which yeah. i quite like it's fluid but for some people it's kind of a bit scary so i think for one thing in this in this time um, the more connected we are to our higher self and angels and guides, the more we can navigate this fluid world because mm. the world is a bit volatile at the moment. And we need an intuition that's awakened and guided. So as I, I think I mentioned before uh, COVID hit, I was guided, get out of London. I was like, OK. And even before that, I was guided, get everything online. Don't put don't leave every. You know, I was in the di director of this organization and I was trying to get things online. I didn't know why, but I think this is the way to go. I'm guided this way. And now when COVID hit, my business was 100% online, practically. There was, I did a couple of live events. And, you know, I was, you know, I actually sailed through that pretty well. Oh. You know, whereas a lot of people, of course, suffered. So having an intuition, of course, will guide you <clears throat> in a way <clears throat> in these volatile times. You know, I, I um, dipped a toe into crypto four or five times and uh, that worked out all right. You know, it's not that the higher self would, would tell you, put money on a horse but i got the i did get the in the intuition check out cryptocurrency so i was like all right i'll check them out i've got no idea what they are let's have a look and i did uh go in there and uh, you know, came out okay you know divine timing. Right. <laughs> yeah divine timing and um, um yeah so i think the intuition is very useful skill as I, even my father might agree now on the other side go all right son okay i agree now you're right yeah, you know, we're, we're looked after, we're guided. It's whether we listen, whether we take notice, whether we realise whether it goes over our heads or, or whatever, you know. But in, in certain times, we just do take that notice because it is required and needed for something. So, yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Um, can yeah. I ask you a question? Yeah. You know, because, you know, I do your meditations, um, which have helped me immensely and I feel the connection. And it's so nice to just let you take, you do it. I don't have to even do it. Mm. There's something yeah. that's swinging for me. And, you you know, you're bringing in the angels, rah, rah, rah. Can you give me your interpretation of that energy, of that angelic energy? Sort of? I'm interested. The angelic energy... Your interpretation. For me, hmm. uh, they do two, two things primarily, I, I feel. They hold blueprints of certain energies and, and they hold a vibration connected to a certain blueprint so for example um or i use six archangels in all of the meditations you know um raphael michael gabriel uriel yeah. uh sandophon metatron now each one so the two the, the vertical hold these grids which is like the earth grid with all of the fairy realm and the nature spirits and the elementals, and then the cosmic Christ grid, which is like vast, you know, goes up uh, the great central sun. And within that, there's many, many beings. And it's really, that's the, that um, Metatron, I feel, is primarily holding the whole ascension process when I feel him. He's really holding it and galvanizing it. And um, the archangels of the horizontal plane, you have like Raphael of the mind, of magic, of healing, he holds these templates. Yeah. You know, he, people might think of him as Hermes, uh, you know. Then you have Michael, who's this protector, fiery warrior energy, um, you know, psychic protection energy uh, blueprint. The, Gabriel, the messenger, you know, for people who want to channel, he holds that space of channeling, really, and being the divine messenger. So anyone who is a messenger, Gabriel is the one. And Uriel, Uriel is slightly more mysterious for me. Mir Uriel holds earthly structures which includes things like money but also spiritual laws that relate to the earth so each one of them holds um these templates now one thing i don't know i get a lot of people who channel archangel michael i've never heard any of the archangels speak to me in any of those way like long speeches i've never heard it you, know, you might get ascended beings who speak like that or all kinds of beings but I've never heard the archangels. They're not very chatty to me anyway. They, they're they just holding space and holding templates That's and cool. opening new doors. They're yeah. not yeah. They're not doing, they they're do. opening the door of the new age. They're not giving me a long, long speech about it, really. Right. So that's my feeling. And there are angels for every template, every quality. Um, love, there are angels that hold that quality, which means that we can 
access the template of love in all of its spectrum because there are angels holding that vast spectrum of love and light and every quote joy and happiness and bliss i have angels holding the template so we can invite them and and feel that energy and that template but they may not sit down and give us a lecture about it they might I, just I, hold I the agree. space i agree i love it I, I talk to my students i say it's like they hold a vast library and when we tap in to what the book we want we pull it out of their energy it's there for us it's all there and they hold that space and it's such yeah. a unique and fabulous energy so i'm always interested to see what people's take on it is and as you were explaining i'm glad because everyone will you know listen to this or podcast and they'll hear because every time you went through those angels then i heard that lift that that energy come through with their names that you hear in the yeah meditations okay. yeah. <laughs> so yeah so yeah, like taking a, that a, a sort of step forward how did you come to understand that connection because i found that fascinating in the space so i trained for many years in shamanism and wicca and in wicca particularly they they have an understanding of the magical directions you know, but they would call it guardian of the east, guardian of the south, guardian, guardian, guardian. They would say Gaia and the energy of the sun. They would have these names for it. Yeah. So after I came out the dark night, the soul, I started to really get strongly the tap on the shoulder for these angelic energies. And so I had to meditate going, well, maybe they relate to these directions. I didn't, you know, it somehow came to mind. Maybe the angels are the ones who relate to these directions. This would be heresy for anyone in the pagan tradition. They would say this is complete heresy, what Steve is talking about. But um, so I, I connected first with the uh, uh, Raphael, Michael and Gabriel were quite easy to connect with. That Uriel was harder. I didn't. He was the slightly one. What, who holds the north? Then I, it took me a while to get that one. And then uh, Sandophon, Sandophon and Metatron then came after that. Um, yeah. And they held these grids whereas the horizontal they weren't holding grids as much but these two were holding grid of the earth grid of grid of the the great central sun and um and so i suppose i meditated it and it started to come to me and uh then i thought I, I, in the early days i, I thought well I'll, I'll put out a recording you know and, and nobody who listened to it i think probably about 50 people on youtube and uh, or, or soundcloud or youtube and I thought, but hey, this is what I'm here to do. So I just started doing it. And the more I did it, the more the angels were going, right, we want you to now connect with this energy and that energy. And mm. it was very movable. It wasn't like, um, I, I, I know people who channel the Arcturian Galactic Council, for example. I don't do that. I'm like, well, here we are talking about the mother wound. Two weeks time could be the father wound. Then it could be the Lyran star race. It could be um you know the syrian uh, psychic surgeons it could it moves around but what i found is i think because i worked in alternatives is the dial of my mind can adjust mm. that i've touched many many things and so it's not that they're unfamiliar so i can dial into the pagan path i can dial into the angelic i can dial into the star races i can dive into the fairy into the earth i can it what i don't do is stay there for a long time it's a shame actually i'd like to hang out with them much longer you know i remember i uh, sekhmet the goddess sekhmet because mm -hmm. uh, i'm very connected to the egyptian uh, pantheon oh. the goddess sekhmet connected with me and i was just like it's ecstatic oh. you know i loved it she was so strong so powerful after 10 days gone you know it's a bit like having girlfriends who come in you fall in love with them and then they go <laughs> like oh my heart oh my heart <laughs> But I'm used to it now. I go, okay, I don't feel rejected. Okay, is this yeah. is just the role I'm doing. So yeah. I I'm um I say a lot of people have the role of holding a fixed space or a very, you know, and really going deep into that. How I hold a kind of very bigger space that people can almost like go into not really like going into a supermarket, spiritual supermarket, but they can go and go, oh, that's the energy I need to work with. That's the energy I need to work with. And so I suppose I'm giving them a vast spectrum to, to to understand what they're aligned with and what really wants to touch them, I suppose. Well, I know I work that way, and I think Anthony does too. Mm. We, yeah. we, I feel that we're more on that. Yeah, we're not just yeah. locked yeah. into a space where, okay. yeah. And uh, I feel yeah. that way it works, and it's like who it is getting. And I feel like when you, you know, listening to those meditations, whichever one 
sometimes I'll search through them, but I don't need to. I know the one that comes is always going to be the right, exactly the right one. Hmm. Yeah. You know, That's and good. I think it's because you do do it that way. Yeah. You know? Well, I, I've also got, I've got a finger on the collective consciousness. So what's going on? What does What's alive in the world? Because I get a lot of people emailing me, can you do one on this, do one on that? I'm like, well, it's got to come, it's got to be, it's got to come down, you know. Like mediumship, the, then they ask you that question. You're like, well, I'm just going to give you what's, com what's coming to Yeah, you have to give what's coming. I can't, yeah. I can't <laughs> alter it. And I think we chatted before that you, you mentioned um, how freedom is an important focus for your magazine that's coming up. Yeah. And one of the things which I think is universal for starseeds and light workers is the quality and expression of freedom. Everyone in this in the spiritual community wants to have freedom of being, freedom of expression, freedom of mind, because the you know the the old world is actually entrapping book, the mind, freeing the spirit, freeing the spirit, yeah, the book. <laughs> freeing the spirit. Thank you, and I'll, I'll send you fifty dollars uh, later. I promise. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> So we want to free the mind. First of all, we've got to free our minds because once we free our minds, we free our consciousness, we free our emotional body, we free our body. And our mind is locked in all kinds of belief systems, stories, you know, cultural programming. We have to break and family programming. We have layer, to break free of all of it. Upon layer, upon layer, like the article I've written today for the magazine for this upcoming issue that is uh, very personal sort of. And it was the spirit of freedom is what I called the article. And um, before I picked up your book and went, oh, yeah, it's been the spirit. So I know it, it was so sinking deep, the three of us. This is great. Mm -hmm. But it, it's exactly that. And as I was writing, you know, I had no answer to what freedom is. I could just share my personal story and thoughts because it's layer upon layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. And really you have to come up with it yourself and feel yeah. it you're getting there and what is it and like well we've all got our zone which we feel is comfortable and what i've discovered is that we we have limits to joy mm. all of us have limits to joy we have limits to love we have anything positive that we might consider positive we might think i'm a happy person but there's limits to it yeah now we only know there's a limit when we hit the actual extent of the limit now i'll, I'll give you an example i had a, a, a very close friend who was very joyful, very lovely person. But in conversations I noticed over the years, when it got too joyful, she had to become a bit more dramatic. She had to create a new drama. She was Italian, so drama was natural to her. <laughs> yep. but, uh, <laughs> sorry, Italians. I, I grew up with Italians. So I got it. <laughs> okay. I got it. <laughs> they loved the Hey, hey. You know. And I said to her one day, do you realize when we get to a certain vibration of joy between us, you kind of do something that goes off. And she was like, no, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. And I, I've kind of noticed it over the years in different ways. Different people might have abundance would be another one. I feel okay at this level of abundance, but now I feel very up. Oh, that's a bit too much for me, too much. And they start getting, a, they, have, they create a, a resistance pattern to going beyond the box. I think we do. And so we need to know our limits. And of course, the spiritual journey will push us to the limit. And at the end of the limit will be a certain level of doubt, maybe self-doubt. Am I worthy? Uh, am I capable? Or maybe some anxiety or fear or better the devil you know well i know this level of money that level is a bit oh a bit uncomfortable or this level of joy is fine but that level is just you know am i going to lose the plot if i get too joyful we have all these things and we have to know our limits know our resistance patterns and and we all have a natural way of resisting the light which might be distraction it might be um workaholic becoming into you know i'll create some business over there we do create this to avoid the light really and so this is the thing around once we realize we do that, we can start breaking free of it. But most of us are unconscious of it. We got, like my friend said, no, I'm not doing that at all. Where she clearly was doing it, but couldn't see it. You know, needed an outside person to say it to who was a bit awake. And if she'd have um, if she'd have gone, OK, I'll, I'll look at that and I'll then it would have transformed. But most people go, no, I did not. They deny the yeah. deny any feedback. And so they won't work with it. It's like we're building blocks on either side of the seesaw and then so you're getting there and it's like oh, oh so we've got to come back to that way to get that balance up if we can find the space in the middle where yeah. we're not actually stuck in or building and it's it's the blocks interesting then you're saying it. yeah it's interesting how you're saying that too because i think people around us 
through their conditioning also get uncomfortable with who we're becoming when we're working to our limits. Totally. And that then adds a whole nother layer or another dimension to how we then can work within our vibration to push and find that limit. Uh, so well, then there'll be um, I have to please other people I have to tone myself down for other people I'm responsible for how other people feel uh, which is often happens in families I can't rock the boat so I'll be the one who stays being the funny one to help the family balance and heal or whatever it's going on and uh, or I'll be the rebellious one and we have to kind of break we're not responsible for other people's feelings and we, we don't go out to hurt their feelings of course I don't go out my way to hurt my feelings I, it came to me very early on that um, with my children, for example, I've got four granddaughters and two children, two, a, a son and a daughter, that it came to me that I'm not responsible for my children's happiness or even my grandchildren's happiness. Now, I struggled with that. I'm still that struggling with while. that. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but what it, what it means is I am, I, as a parent and grandfather, I do my best for them, but they may do whatever they want with it. You know, I'm not responsible for their choices. I'm not responsible for the way they think. I can help them as much as I can, but I'm not ultimately responsible for what they do, mm. really. And mm. a lot of people take responsibility for their families where there's not really, not really, you do the best you can. We can. And you, you surrender them to their higher selves and their angels if they're connected to them. <laughs> you do your best, but, uh, you know. And, it's... you know, I've got two... Uh, teenage granddaughters now and i look at them and i want to steer them i want to, i'm taking them on a road trip soon actually oh, but i'm i can't i can't uh, be there every moment you know they are learning and grow and they will learn through dead ends and learn through you know tripping over and as we all do yep. you know and actually for a parent it's very good to allow children to learn through mistakes and also not to impose your values onto children this is very common in 3d world the matrix imposing your values like security on me and proper job which was you know let's help stevie to navigate this world because if he gets a secure job and a proper job he'll be fine it was the worst advice mm. the worst advice for me and so uh, imposing your value even spiritual values i never impose my spiritual values on my kids if they're um, yeah. if they want to do what they want to do they want if they're encouraged and interested of course i've shown them but mm. we can't impose our values oh, can't on them. Do that. it will limit them that's actually. something i haven't done and they're all quite gifted in this way themselves, whether they're into it or not into it, or put it aside or whatever. So, no, I haven't pushed that. I've just smothered them and helicoptered. <laughs> they all have a mother wound. I had my, grand, my grandson, nine-year-old grandson, on the weekend, and he said, Nana, I'm okay. And I said, yes, but I just have to nag you. <laughs> so I okay. that when he said, Nana, are you okay? And I went, oh, yes, thank you. Thank you for asking. And we were fine. <laughs> well, and a lot I'm, of these kids are very so wise souls. You know. Oh, yeah. Nana's not happy unless I nag, and I just know that you yeah, sure you don't want that. You sure? You sure? <laughs> I'm terrible. Yeah. I'm terrible. Yeah, we we do but parent very differently. Uh, <laughs> I'm a I'm a new I'm a first time grandparent from five months ago. So oh nice. Um, and you know when I got into my spiritual <laughs> journey, uh, I sat around the dining room table with my partner and my three kids, and and I said to them, "All right, guys, this is what I'm doing." This is how it's going to work. And the light flashed and they went, hmm. I said, that's just working with spirit. So I'm not going to pry into your lives at all. Uh, if spirit wants me to, and when I say spirit, my team or your team, uh, want me to talk to you about something, they'll make me aware of it, but they won't be telling me the details. And we've got to have that level to start with. And they've said yes. And then the light's flashing again and all this sort of stuff. And that's how I've worked with them, you know. So I'll get a sense that one of them wants to talk to me and I'll just ring them up and say, good day. I won't yeah. ask them necessarily what's going on or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I don't pry. And ultimately, over the years, they, they've all just, they come out, they ask me questions when they're ready. And I will be able to answer that to a point. And then it's like, well, now you have to go and do your own research and look at what's yeah. going on but i'm certainly not a helicopter parent i i just let them fall over dad's here if you need me um i'll be the wall and the rock for you uh if you've got a problem you come talk to me and um you know i'm very blessed that i've got three beautiful kids uh one's married one probably will end up married by the end of this year judging by what the partner's saying this is the one that's got the grandchild and oh, right. uh, you know and and they're they're all good people they're all different 
if they're all good people and and that's what we we should be aiming for yeah. on the planet you know yeah I think children learn by the, the example of parents and grandparents more than what they say you know whatever I say <clears throat> but what they what they notice is how I am being that's what kids will notice yeah. you know uh, and they also notice my generosity. They go, "Oh, you know, granddad's very generous." They they like yeah, that. Never, like my grandson said to his dad, he goes, "Nana never says no." What are you talking about? <laughs> Nana never says no. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, I love it. Yeah. I mean, look, it's it's. I, I I think if everybody, you know, since I've sort of I guess come out of the that dark side and seen there is a good light side, and that we we can work with that in such a, a gorgeous way, the the understanding that all we can do is walk our own path in the way we want to do it. And then anyone will either interact, not interact, make their mind up, judge, do whatever they want to do. You know, it doesn't stop us from being hurt by the reaction, especially if they're close family members and, and the way they talk. However, getting through that and moving into that space where you just go, you know what, I've got, my angelic realm up there my angels are looking after me. i have a particular connection with gabrielle and um and and that's always good uh, however there's so many more out there that i've never connected with you know um yeah till until i started listening to your meditations and then suddenly it's like i was quite crook a couple of weeks ago and i just i was doing two meditations a day of yours just the mm -hmm. short ones mm -hmm. Binge. And binge, binge binging, meditation, binging. and binging. Uh, you know, was back on my feet within four days. Yeah. Oh, great! And Wonderful. you know, I'm just doing what I do. I mean, I have my own disciplines and I do my own things, and I look after my body. And I was doing what I needed to do, and I stopped work. And you know, when and I depleted. when we've got that depletion, sometimes it takes something else that is of a similar or resonative, resonative frequency. And that's what I found, the frequency that you're streaming, receiving, emitting, all of that, it resonates and it works for me. So I feel yeah. like that's it. And when we are depleted like that, that's what we need. We can't necessarily get us. We just need that lift. Mm -hmm. And it's got to be from the right energy. So Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I try and cover a lot of bases in the meditations, health, healing, <laughs> chakras, angels. Oh, the lot. Goddesses. Oh. Uh, oh, future lives. Yeah, yeah. Future no, timelines. I know it's fucked. Oh, it's pretty. I cover every base. I, I'm, uh, I'm just happy. <laughs> keen to to sort of understand a little bit, and obviously you can describe as much as you want to, or as little as you want to. How do you prepare yourself to to step into when you're doing a meditation or you're recording a meditation? What's what's going on in the head, in the energy? How do you how do you get yourself into that space? Well. The first stage is downloading whatever wants to come down. Uh, in the early days, I used to just wait and download it and work it out. Take me a week or two to work it out. It's much quicker now. I can get it much quicker. Um, but now these days, I also ask, is this a valid? You know, I'm getting, a, a, I get a, I'm working on it. What is this something we can do? And so I'll get a response in that way. So it's like backwards and forwards these days. Yep. So the first stage is actually opening up you know, is this an area? What is this an area that's valid? And if if I get a yes, then the download of well, what do we do in this? How do we do it? You know, and I get sometimes I do a morning meditation with my partner, and often I'll get a download within five seconds of boom. I'm like, well, I've just got to go and write some notes. Something's just come down, and then I unpack it. So I've got what is this? It's about this, and I unpack it. So I make a load of notes, and then I run the energy through my body and go, um, okay. So angels and, uh, okay, this is the first thing we do. This is the second thing we do. This is the third thing we do. How Does that feel complete? And I might get a yes, it's complete. Okay, done. Well, I'll record it. No, not complete. What's missing? Then the thing is, what's missing? Is there a bit missing to this whole process? The, each one is a process. You know, the whole thing is a structured process. I'll get something's missing. I'll run it through again. Is it done? Yeah, good. I feel it. That's it. And then I record it. So the the main work is done before I actually record it. When I sit down to record it, I'll have the notes of what it's about, and I'll just get in the space and I'll just run it. But it, it's important that before I actually record it, that I've got all of the bits together. It's a bit like going to a lecture. You know, you're delivering a speech. Before you go there, you want to do a little bit of re make sure have I got everything? Is it all done? Is it right? 
Do I feel good about this? Uh, checking in, is this it? Off we go. So yeah. that's the process. Um, sometimes that process takes weeks, but more often these days it takes, it can be really quick. It can be done within, you know, uh, an hour or something. You know, it's really quick. Oh, these okay. Days. Yeah. But so, not all okay. of them. They're not all that quick. No, well, sometimes, you know, your, your meditations run from 15 minutes to an hour plus. So, you know, it, it's got to be a bit flexible. The other component, um, I'm a muso, uh, and I really enjoy a lot of the music that you put to your meditations. And I find, and, and, I, and again, I'm, I'm, leaning towards this understanding that as you're working with or whoever's composing your music and i'm not sure if it is you or somebody else they they're in tune with what's required for that particular meditation because that's what it feels like to me listening to it i've got a library from about a dozen composers who have composed for me and i i've sort of got a, a library of many many tracks so what i do is when i get a meditation i have to check what image goes with this i have to find an image that goes with it and then i have to go and find what music will go with it now if it's a chakra track that's easier because i've got chakra tracks so i might listen to a few different ones go oh that's the best one for the sacral but if it's not then i'd have to look I, I might have to just skim through a load of them and go oh that's the one so it's like pick so there's the it is a whole process of like downloading it unpacking it recording it then finding the right music finding the right image and then voila it's uh oh it's a whole it's the package it's like yeah chef chef in the kitchen you know pulling out all of the bits yeah I'm i quite like that process yeah. actually yeah i'm fascinated i, I did a, a a recording uh for of meditation and and it was an in, it was indian meditation a native american one through one of my guides and i sat there in the recording studio and i had the hand drum and i just let him work through me and so it's his voice his understanding and we got out the other side and I said to the, the friend of mine that was doing the recording, I said, oh, I've just been told we need to find uh, some ocean sounds, so some wave sounds and all the rest of it. And he just said, oh, yeah, I've got this one here. We had a quick listen. I said, that's, that's good. So he just chucked a chunk into the meditation. And from start to finish, it aligned perfectly. It didn't have to play with the track, didn't have to do anything with it. It was just literally, he just grabbed this one out of the library, went bang, and yep. it was all perfect. And so, you know, again, being open to the, that understanding that music is such an important part of um, or an emotive part of any meditation regardless. Yeah. And I quite like Solfeggio and Binaural Beats, those kind of uh, tracks as well I quite like. Uh -huh. And, uh, yeah, music is so important. It sets the mood really if you get the wrong piece of music then uh it just won't work and uh yeah so that's really really important mm. and so yeah so it's a, it's a whole creative process the whole thing this is where I, i'm quite a creative being and i feel my creativity at the moment is not in painting not in drawing it's in producing all of this and i, I did do some lessons recently with a sound engineer who taught me some more tricks about sound engineering so that's a whole nother creative you know you could put a little off. tiny tiny bit of you know um shifting from oh. le left right ear music you get all kinds of little things they're they're small things but they kind of add to the quality of it i quite enjoy Absolutely. and i think everything's ongoing learning as well i'm here to learn yes. so i'm always yes. yeah. never too old to learn really I well i think that the day we stop learning is the day that we're not wanting to live anymore to be honest yeah um, yeah, yeah you know it it amazes me that i can know so little and i've been on this planet for so long and you know it doesn't matter when the journey starts you know i've still been here nearly 60 years and i just every time i open my mind to something i just go oh my gosh i know nothing yeah. and I, right that drive is just you have to have that humility yeah yeah the more i i learn the realize that i realize that the, is the less i know because there's so much mm. yeah well, I thought after being at Alternatives, I'd heard 20 years of authors speaking every week, going every weekend practically for workshops. I thought I'd heard it all. But then when I left Alternatives, it's like a whole new universe opened up and a whole new level of learning appeared. There's no, I think even on the other side, learning doesn't stop. Learning and growing just keeps going, doesn't it? Yeah. I, I absolutely believe that. Yeah. 
Can yeah. I share something about Steve now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go for it. Because we, these interviews, you know, it just we're just sitting here and the time is just flying. So right? yeah. This is great. And but everything you've said is just you're born on the 6th of October, yeah, 1957. Your life path is 11. You know, 11. Yeah, 11, yeah. Everybody's all 11, 11. You know, today, today and the month is 11, don't you? I don't even know what day it is. It's the fifth of the sixth. Okay, you notice the normal day. Fifth of the sixth, yeah. The sixth. Is it's today the sixth. Fifth of the sixth. Oh, oh yeah, fifth of the sixth is an eleven. There you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but the sixth of October, nineteen fifty-seven, so it gives you an eleven life path. And eleven, as we know, is is the number of illumination, of awakening, and and it's a big messenger to many. But it's also um, comes up when I look at your your shall I say kin, and you know kin means family connection it's our galactic earthly family connection in the dream spell calendar and you are the yellow spectral warrior and the spectral oh. tone is the 11th tone of freedom and liberation <laughs> ding dong wow. and so the warrior is the pathfinder and everything yeah. you've said along the path you're making a way you're making a path and um you, when I break down your number chart, you're driven by the power of seven, which is the divine antenna. You know, seven is an Allen key to open the doors. It's the most difficult, I believe it's the most difficult number in the grid, but it was also because it is the key. It's the key to our very existence. And that drives you. Which direction? Where will I go? I'm tuning in. You're tuning in. Um, and then basing, of course, 1957 is a 22, which is, so you've got 11 and 22. So oh, yeah. there's two master numbers, and 22 is the divine chaos, the 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 god, you know, the, the goddess. So you've got the master sun, you've got the the goddess, the you know, the whole polarity there, plus the 33 Christ consciousness. If I bring that together as well, and underlying every single, so you've created enough of your own chaos, especially in those early years, as I've read in your book. <laughs> those dark holes are the 22. You'll go. Right. It gives you the ability to climb out come to the surface again before you create another bit of chaos. But mm -hmm. your everyday is based on the number five, which to me is very angelic. I see five as a very angelic number and it gives you the ability to, when I fall down, I'll get up again and I'll give it another right. go and, I'll, and it's a change. And then your creativity comes out. Universal consciousness comes in with the number three. So that's the mindfulness and the emotions and that creativity and that artist, artesian love to create and produce and everything. And then, you come down and it all comes down as I draw my little funny face chart. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, it comes down and there's your leadership, your number one again, right? So you've got yeah. one in the middle, 6, 10, 9, and 57. So there's that I am balancing this. And then it comes down again and pinpoints down there that, that leadership, that discovery. Who am I? How am I? Am I? I am that I am. So you've got all that there. And you mentioned 1991 as a pinpoint energy and I looked yeah. at on the calendar you were um that that year of awakening that spiritual awakening you actually became a rhythmic world bridger which is connecting and understanding the other side and it was number okay. six which is the day you're born on and six that's so strong in your chart is all about people connecting with helping with how you are connected to people your relationships personal public career-wise, in every way, you are here to work that out and experiment and sort it out. So it's mm. such a part of what you've done for work and, and in every way, yes, you are here to work with and understand and connect with the people in order to understand yourself. Yeah. And then um, in 2012, um, you became a blue <laughs> cosmic monkey. That's oh. It. No, that was in, uh, no, you became a magnetic monkey. In 2012, you became a magnetic monkey. So that was a whole new beginning. And, of course, the monkey, like Anthony's a monkey, is the magician. And the magnetic is the first tone. So it was such a new beginning for you to discover that magic and mystery and world. And come, if you think of the tarot, putting yourself in that energy of the magician. Mm. Um, but I'm going to read you your birth. This is who you are born, yellow spectral warrior, kin number 76. And I actually have a daughter. One of my daughters is 76. Spectral warrior. So I am the pathfinder in my higher archetype. And I'm here about, it's all, as I said, freedom and liberation is the tone. I dissolve in order to question. Releasing oh. fearlessness 
I feel the output of intelligence with the spectral tone of liberation and I'm guided by my own power doubled. I have to go my way. I have to find my path. I have to do it no matter what because that is the way I move forward and I become a pathfinder for others and I'm a warrior in that regard. So that's who you're born. Wow, thank you. Yeah. Thank well, you. Is this the Mayan calendar? Is it Mayan? Well, it's based around the Mayan glyphs <coughs> and it was decoded by Jose Argalis. And um, it is called the Dream Spell Calendar. So um, if you go to look at the natural law of time, the law of time, you can find out more about that. Okay, I'll check it out. Yeah, and it's pretty amazing. Um, it's very amazing. Early introduced me to this quite a few years ago. And it put me in it. <laughs> and, you know, we, we found that we, if we added all our kin numbers up for today, we would then get information about how this was going to work. Oh. And Shirley and I, uh, we create a, a mirror. And so I can mirror. almost guarantee that if I'm going through something, I can ring up Shirley and say, oh, I've just got this and this and this happening. She so go, oh, I know, I've got this and this and this happening. And so it, I've always found the dream spell to be just so beautiful and accurate in in its timing and the divine timing and and jose played a flute and of course i play native american style flute as well and things like that and it's just it's all just seems to fall into place nicely absolutely right i'll and check that out where you're at personally this year for 2024 because it rolls like our numerology does you know in personal years you are since your birthday in um October or no coming up to October we're not there yet are we you will become you're ending a cycle which makes total sense with a card that I pulled out of the tarot before to mark the spot in your book because I pulled you the death card which is all about endings ready for new beginnings and you're in an ending cycle blue cosmic monkey right endure in order to play Transcend oh. illusion. I seal the process of magic with the cosmic tone, the 13th tone of presence, and I'm guided by my power of vision. So you are ready to expand even more and step into a whole new mm. wow. interesting oh, yeah. vibration. Mm. Wow. Is this um, an app or, that you can get or is yeah, this you a... get an app, yeah. Mm. Oh, and you're okay, in the I'll check it out. Fear of a personal numerical cycle, so it's all about the interactions. It's really important how you interact and how you connect and and everything. Oh, it to, oh yeah. Oh, this is you. I'll check so, it out. Yeah, the app is um, the one that we use. Is um, you got an iPhone. So thirteen, the number colon yeah. twenty colon sync, um, and that'll bring it up. S Y N C. So that'll that that's the one that um, we work with. All right, thirteen twenty. Okay. Uh, we can, Anthony can email you. Um, yeah, I can yeah. send you the details. On oh, it. send me. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So um, oh, it's no, excellent. amazing because it covers so much of who we are and helps you. And we all have a purpose. And so in the sacred grid of two hundred and sixty, the wheel of time. Once we discover things like this, with you know, with most modalities, they're here for us to find who we are, discover our purpose. So that we can yeah. find that balance that we've been talking about in the light and the dark and the and the onion can unfold and here we are all discussing all these different things that we could discuss forever because it's so infinite in its well that's I think that's the thing. We could discuss it forever. Uh, we <laughs> yeah. don't have forever just at the minute. <laughs> so um, it, I think Steve, it's just been a pleasure chatting to you. I just can't oh. believe how quickly the hour's gone. And I feel we haven't even touched on some of the stuff that, you know, I was looking forward to touching on. Uh, so from from myself and our supernal readers, um, thank you very much for giving us of your time today and really appreciate it. One more question. Oh, you, you better make it quick. A very quick suggestion for people from this moment, how to move forward in all the changes and things that are going on? Um, well, there's lots of tools. Check out my YouTube channel, Steve Nabell. Um, check out the playlist because I've organized it in loads of playlists. But uh, the thing to, to, to really get is um, don't worry about what's going on in the world. The world will do what it needs to do to reconfigure. The th important thing is for you to connect to your own higher self, guides, angels, and find your way forward. 
mm. and not to worry about, you know, the world will naturally, it's not that we forget about the world, but focus on your path, what you can do to help where you need to go next, your next step. Mm. Beautiful. And Shirley, I was about to ask that question. And that was how I was going to finish off the, the interview. So that's just <laughs> definitely on a roll in that space. But, uh, yeah. You are connected. Back to the whole connection. We're all very connected, I think. Yeah. 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 It's um, excellent. Well, thanks, guys. And maybe uh, one you. day I'll come over to Melbourne and uh, we'll do something over there. Well, we would love to have you over here. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think yeah. that we're between Shirley and myself, I'm not sure about the rest of Australia, we're certainly creating. Uh, a Steve Noble fan club in our with our students. Yeah, no, no, so Nobel, shall we yeah, say Nobel. about Nobel? Or no? Nobel, yeah. Nobel. Nobel. Okay. Yeah. Nobel. So uh, yeah, so no, definitely. But uh, thank you very much. So to uh, if that for people, if you want to go to supernalmagazineaustralia.com.au, you can subscribe. It's free. We come out bi monthly. All our interviews and podcasts are available through the website, uh, which is supernalmagazine.com.au. And uh, we hope you enjoy and have a supernal month. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Ciao. Bye.